So let's try to put this all together with an example. So here we just have a graph. We're told that, okay, this object undergoes SHM. What's the frequency of oscillation? How can we do that from just a graph? Well, let's remind ourselves again. What's the equation again we need? Oh, yeah, it's A equals minus omega squared x. Let's remember that. And remember what happens then if we graph A versus x, which is what we have here, then we can look at this and have it linearized, can't we? If you look at this right here, this right here is going to be your gradient. Okay, and now we can essentially ignore the negative part, by the way, and because I mean, we've already accounted for the negative, has this negative graph here. So we can say that's the gradient because this is the y and that's the x value. Okay, so if we graph this, which we've got here, that means there's a gradient. Well, that means then that the absolute value of the gradient, what does that equal? Well, that equals omega squared. Now, why would we bother doing that? Well, it's because it's pretty much the only thing we can do from this graph. But good news, once we have omega, because of course we can calculate omega, can't we? Uh, once we get that, we'll just take the square root of the uh, gradient. And why do we use that? Well, because once we have omega, we can figure out f using this equation here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's take a look then. Can we find the gradient of this graph? Well, I hope so. First, let's look at something here. There's something weird. This is uh, millimeters, so watch out for that. That means this is 10, time, uh, 10 to the negative 3. So that's what these are. Watch out for those. Well, i got to find the gradient of this. Remember how I find the gradient? Uh, let's see, gradient equals, well, do you remember, uh, I mean, a long time ago, probably a few years ago, you've learned how to do this. It's going to just equal delta y over delta x. Now, I'm going to just do the absolute value of the gradient, so I'm not really going to care about positives or negatives. So let's do this. Let's pick two points on this graph and try to figure this out. So I'll probably pick 0, 0. That's a good one. And now if I look at this, uh, this goes, this is like 500, this is 1,000, this is 1,500, and 2,000, 2,500. Uh, and I'm looking at, there's like a point right here that matches exactly. Like there's one right here that fits. Do you see that point right here? This is actually the one I'm interested in. So that means this one right here, let's look at how far is this distance and how far is this distance. Okay, so this is what we need to know. So it goes from zero to, well, that's one less than 2,500. That must be 2,400. So I'll say, okay, that's going to be 2,400 over. And how far does it go over? It goes to the right. Let's see, it starts off at minus 0 0.5, and it goes to the right by 0 0.5. So that means it's going to be 0 0.5, but watch out, 0 0.5 what? Times 10 to the minus 3. It's really important that you get that part right. Now remember, I'm ignoring the negatives. That's why I did the absolute value of a gradient. I don't really care about the positive or negative here. I just care about the gradient itself, like the magnitude of it. Well, okay, let's actually try to do this. So I've got my trusty old calculator here, and I'll do figure this out. So I've got 2,400. Um, I'm going to divide that. Oops. Actually, I did a fraction already. Uh, divided by 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And I get this answer. So 4.8 times 10 to the 6. Okay, so that's what I get here. So that means uh, that's what my gradient is. Okay, so again, this is 4.8 times 10 to the 6. Now keep in mind, that's not everything I needed here. This is just the value of the gradient itself. So now why is this helpful? Well, because I want to find omega now, and I can, because omega just equals the square root of the gradient. That means it's going to be the square root of 4.8 times 10 to the 6. So let's figure that out. So if I do that right there, I'll just do the square root of the answer, I end up with 2190.89. 2190.89, and this is in uh, radians per second. Okay. Now, why is that helpful? Well, that's because now, finally, I can put it all together. Remember that I have an equation that relates the frequency and the angular frequency. So I can say 1 over f equals 2 pi over omega. I'll write that down just to have it here. So I have 1 over f equals 2 pi over omega. Well, what does that mean? That means if I put the f on top, I can put the omega on top as well. So now I can say that, okay, let's see, I've got omega equals uh, 2 pi f. I'm just moving the omega to the left and the f to the right. And what does that mean? Well, I want to get f by itself. So I can say, therefore, f equals, well, I can say it's omega over 2 pi. Now, you could have seen that, of course, from you know the original thing when I started with uh, right here. Well, it's actually related, but I think it's, 
It's nice to start off with the equation that you get in your data booklet. So that means then I can just state then that, well, the frequency then will just be this number right here. So it's 2190.89. Now remember, there's a lot more decimals going on here, so it just actually keeps going. But I'll divide that by 2 pi, and let's see. So it's always good to use all the decimals you can with your calculator. So I'm going to say this answer right here. I'm going to say, okay, answer divided by, and I'll say 2 times uh, pi. I say enter. And do you notice I get 348.691? So 348.691. Therefore, I could say that the frequency is approximately equal to, uh, let's just use two significant figures. I think that's uh, better. So we'll say 350, let's say. Um, and I will call them, well, they're hertz, because it's more over seconds. So there we go. So that was a pretty good example, I think, that shows a lot of the steps. Right? You had to take this graph, linearize it, find the gradient. That The gradient uh, is equal to omega squared. So you took the square root of the gradient, did that, figured out that we're using this equation what the real frequency was.